Hi, my name is Boris and in today's beginner's tutorial we are going to write the chords for this track. write these chords from scratch so after watching this tutorial hopefully you'll be able to make your own patterns for deep house or tropical house like this and just a quick reminder before we get started if you like what you see in this tutorial make sure to subscribe we're making all kinds of Ableton tutorials for beginners. And if you'd like to learn Ableton Live a little bit more in depth, check out our Ableton Beginners course, which is going to give you all the knowledge you need to get started with making your own tracks. All right, let's get started. So let's solo first the chords that we are going to be making. They are in these two layers. So this pluck layer and pluck to bright. Let's listen to the first one and then I'll enable the second layer. Okay, so we are going to be making this pluck sound in Ableton's analog. It's this synth right here. It's a very simple patch and it's incredibly useful for this kind of tracks. Then we're going to be adding also this bells and tiles preset from Ableton. And if we open it up, you can see that it is the electric device inside, which gives it that characteristic metallic top end. So first of all, let's quickly go over the sound design. This is very simple. I'll disable all the effects and also I'll disable the return track that this one goes to. And uh, this is going to be the dry signal. So it sounds pretty simple. First of all, we have this soul wave playing with oscillator one. And of course, we are using the 24 dB low pass curve. We're adding a slight envelope here with almost 700 milliseconds of decay. But instead of reducing the attack all the way down, we're just giving it 8 milliseconds so that it quickly opens up, but it's not starting at a very high frequency position. Oscillator number two is going to be the square wave. And this is the main body of the sound. An important thing is that the width is at 100% because by default in analog it's at 50%. And if we reduce it, it's going to sound quite weak. We are stacking that with the saw wave that is playing one octave higher, which also is not playing that loud. We are uh, going down in volume here, minus 6 dB. No unison, just uh, a quick amp envelope with the decay uh, of almost the same as the decay of the frequency envelope. Uh, we're adding an effect chorus, auto filter, which limits the frequencies in the intro section. Let's take a look at other effects, delay, We're adding a bit of stereo delay, a different uh, delay length here on the left channel and on the right channel. Then some simple EQ, which cuts the lows basically. And here we have sidechain compression, which basically ducks the signal whenever the kick hits. So it's more groovy with our track. And uh, of course, then there's the return track with reverb. So all the things together. So that's actually quite a lot of reverb. And then the bright plug is also quite simple. We have the boss and tiles preset from Ableton. This is what it sounds like by default. So we're adding sidechain compression here. EQ also doing some work here. More EQ. We have some regular glue compressor action. Very subtle, uh, some chorus and just bringing up the gain with utility. But in this tutorial, we are going to be writing 
cards. We're going to be focusing on the MIDI and how to set that up because we are using a few characteristic elements for this kind of chord progressions. Famous example for this type of chord progression would be Lean On by Major Lazer, an incredibly popular track in which the chord progression is also played by a similar type of pluck instrument and this kind of progressions really work well in these genres. Okay, so first of all I dragged over some of the drums here onto a different place in the arrangement. So that we have a rhythmic backbone and we can just start writing our chord progression. So let's add just a regular four bar loop here. I'm using Command Shift M to insert that MIDI clip, but you can also just select these four bars, right click and go to insert empty MIDI clips. Let's add some kind of rhythm here. And first of all, we are going to write this in the scale of C major. The actual track uses a different tuning, but if we write it in C major, we can easily go down in pitch and adjust it later on. It's really easy. Enabling the scale function should give us C major. You can always change the scales over here. And just let's get started. We're going to be starting off from adding the rhythm, because to me, the rhythm of this chord progression is one of the most important aspects of it. Okay, so let's just add simple C3 notes just like this, and let's just draw out the rhythm. We are here using 16th notes, but we are going to be actually playing eighth notes here. So extending that uh, like this over to make it an eighth note. And uh, let's copy this note by pressing Command or Control on Windows and D, and I'm going to move it to the right. And this kind of dotted rhythm, uh, we're going to repeat over uh, the entire first bar. And let's just repeat this pattern over the entire clip. As you can hear in the original progression, there are two notes here. And there are actually also going to be two notes here. If you are struggling to get a better feel for this, you can also just play, for example, a C chord and maybe take the third and put it up by an octave. Okay, so the rhythm is there, but obviously we're going to use completely different chords. So let's just remove all the top notes and work with the rhythm that we have. Okay, so let's just change the root notes here. First, we're going to be playing an F chord, then we're going to G. Now we're going down to E, and here we are going to be playing two chords, at first A and then back to G. Okay, we can actually just take all of these notes and uh, make triads and hear what that sounds like. And making these triads is very simple. I have disabled this preview button because otherwise it's going to be quite a cacophony. I'm just selecting all of these notes, holding Alt, dragging the notes up to copy them and dragging them once again. Okay, and uh, we're going to use some uh, specific voicings here. For the first chord, we're going to be playing a seventh. For the second chord, we're going to add the octave, so the G. For this chord, we're not even going to be playing the top notes, we're leaving the G as it is. Okay, so chord number three is also going to be a seventh, but the third we're going to be moving up an octave. And as you can see now, the G gets played once again, so that just makes the chord fit much better with the rest. Basically, we are using some nice voice leading over here. Yeah, we just have some modifications for this last two chords. Here we're going to be adding the fourth. And for the last one, uh, we also want to keep this E, so we're adding this E, the sixth. And let's play this progression. And now if we disable the scale, we can take all of these notes by pressing Command or Control and A, and maybe go down two steps to go to the default pitch uh, that we have used for the progression at the beginning. And 
And now velocity is also quite crucial for the electric instrument. We can take that down. So let's take a look at the progression once again and just talk about why this progression works here. Maybe it's going to be easier to understand this harmony if we just take a look at the progression in C major once again. So to me, these kind of chord progressions have one characteristic feature. They typically do not start or end on the tonic. So the first chord in your scale, for example, here we're having the C major scale. We are not even playing the C major chord at all. But in this kind of chord progressions, they could appear, but maybe as the second or third chord. And the so that's number one. Uh, we are not really emphasizing the first chord. We are playing around a lot with the fifth, the fourth and the sixth chords of the scale. And because of that, the progression has a really nice quality. It doesn't really resolve at any point. So it keeps driving the track forward all the time. The other thing is using smart voice leading and some extensions to make the chords really full sounding. And also you want to be adding the rhythm and have the right plucky instrument to be playing these chords. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you'd like to explore Ableton more, we're running a music production academy over on our website with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres, as well as the Ableton beginners course in which you can learn all the necessary basics of production. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay notified. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like and write us a comment, and I will see you in the next tutorials. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed, from an empty file to professional production, as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening, and now let's get back to your tutorial.